God bless you. That's right. Hallelujah. And for a treat, something that we don't talk a whole lot about um, here at Cross Christian Church. But it's an important subject. It's so important that it's probably number two on Jesus' list. Jesus talked mostly about the kingdom of God. But after that, believe it or not, number one, the number two topic that came out of Jesus' mouth from the Bible says, Money. 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 He talked about money more than he talked about faith. He talked about money more than he talked about heaven and heaven. Money. Because the God, despite our religious sensibilities, money matters. Yeah. Money really does matter. It not only matters as a means for us to cope in life, but it matters as a tool of testing. Yeah. God uses money as a tool to test you for your promotion. Yeah. Okay? To test you for your next level. To test you to see if you can be trusted. Ooh. Okay with his resources yeah. before he allows you to receive some more. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Money is a tool. And the economic pillar, as we've been discussing and building our lives, in the seven pillars, and just as a review, what's the first pillar? Psychological. Your psychological pillar. The first thing you have to address is how you see yourself. How you see yourself. How you that's deal true. with you. Right? Your psychological pillar involves your mind, mm -hmm. your will, and your emotions. Mm -hmm. If you can get that in check, you can win any battle. Woo! Any yeah. battle. Yeah. If you can get your mind, your will, and your emotions in check. The Bible yeah. says it like this. The Bible says that a man, that's all right. Don't take the Bible says that a man who can control his own spirit yeah. is more powerful, yeah. is better than a man who can take a city. That's true. Did you hear me? Yes. yes. A man who can control his spirit, spirit. this yes. is the book of Proverbs, by the way, yes. is more powerful, is better, is more successful than someone who can take a city. Wow. And so when you learn how to control yourself, and this is what we've been teaching, that your spiritual power should radiate and affect your life. Amen. Amen. And, and it's a power that people often neglect to their own detriment. Mm. But your spiritual power ought to affect everything. It ought to affect, first of all, your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions, that psychological pillar. It ought to affect your relationships, yeah. which is the second pillar in our lives. Is that right? Because when you get your relationships together, when you start to identify God's purpose for relationships, you can weed out those relationships yeah. that are healthy and edifying mm -hmm. from those that are destructive and toxic. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. That's a very important thing to do in life. Because even if you got you together, if everybody around you is, is not quite together, yeah. then they can drain you yeah. That's so true. of your life force. Yes. They can affect your attitude. Their negativity can mm. affect you. Yeah. Is that right? Amen. Their lack Amen. of faith. You know, there was a time when Jesus himself went back to his hometown. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said that because of their unbelief, Amen. he could not do many miracles there. Amen. This is Jesus now. Wonder-working, power-wielding Jesus. Mm -hmm could not perform many miracles because people's unbelief was blocked. Right. Do you have anybody blocking your miracle on today? Ooh. Oh. I'm trying. Oh, uh, You've got to learn how to mm -hmm. put up boundaries yes. mm -hmm. so that you block those who will block your miracles. Oh. Yeah. Is that right? You've yeah. got to run interference on their yeah. That's yeah. right. Is that right? Yeah. Praise God. And then we have to consider how we operate. Am I really living my life right? There's yeah. a right way to live. You can't stay up all night and expect to get up in the morning and have a business. Right? <laughs> That's, That's not right. operating right. You can't eat a bunch of junk and, and, and not get no exercise and no fresh air and think that God's going to heal you some kind of way. Mm -hmm. That's not how your body is designed. We have to consider as the saints of God, how we operate. 
And so often, we, if we're not careful, can use our spirituality as a cloak to hide from the real world. Mm. Instead of using it as a power to engage the world. Mm. Which is what it really is. I uh, said, I didn't, I didn't light this candle to set up my love for sure. <laughs> I lit this candle so I could shine this light throughout the whole world. Is that right? Yeah. And so the more you develop spiritually, the more your light ought to shine. Mm -hmm. The more you ought to have your mind and emotions together. The more, the better you ought to be able to treat people and deal with others. The more spiritual you are. Is that right? And the better you ought to be at managing your own life. If that Bible is good for anything, it's good for learning how to live. Amen. Amen. Here and now. Not just when we get to heaven. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that godliness is a great gain in this life and the life to come. Is that right? Yes. And so godliness, learn how to live godly. Your spirituality ought to teach you how to live right. To live in such a way that you manage your life where God can get some glory. Mm. Don't mean you got to be perfect. Don't mean you got to outperform anybody else. Just mean that you managing you right. Mm. Is that right? Yes. yes. Because that's really what you're going to give account for in the end. Yes. You ain't got to give account for how somebody else managed theirs and compare themselves with you or, or anything like that. You're going to have to give an account for how you manage your life. That's right. That's right. And some of us, I notice as we get older, instead of managing our lives right, we, we get loose with it. We get relaxed with it. Because we forget what life is about. Do you hear me? The Bible describes life as a race. That you ought to run with patience. Trying to win the prize. Do you have your eyes on any prize today? Is there a prize ahead of you that you're working towards? If not, you're not living life right. Are you running towards it? Are you pacing yourself? Are you managing your life in such a way that you're going to get to your destiny? To what you desire? Or are you just hoping for the best? God never meant for you to just hope for the best. When he made mankind, he said, I'm going to give them a certain power, a certain authority. He called it dominion. And so in giving us dominion, he gave us power to shape our destiny. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you. Was anybody fortunate enough today to have more than one outfit to pick from? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 And did God tell anybody what to wear? No? You got to choose that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, as lovely and beautiful as you all are on today, as clean and presentable as you are, that was a result of your choice. That's right. Is that right? Amen. God didn't present you this well. He provided you with what you needed. To make the choice to present yourself Thank you. this way. Thank you. And that's how God works in our lives. Your life is going to be a result of the choices you make. Oh, yes. Based on what God provides to you. But it's not a direct link from God to the manifestation of what we see. You're in the middle of it. You get to make choices. That determine what your life looked like. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. You get to make the choice what your life looked like. You are not powerless. Mm. If you were powerless, God could not hold you accountable. Mm. The only reason God can judge you is because you got you're holding all the cards. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna say that again. Now he might have dealt you the cards, but you're holding them. Amen. And how you play them is on you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some people have lived better with, with worse cards than you have. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. 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 
Let me say that again. Yeah. Some people have played the game better, the game of life. They have played the game better than you have with worse cards. Mm. Yeah. So you have no excuse, Ooh. is my point. Some people have been given a worse deal than you and still yeah. came out on top. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Do you hear me? That's Some so people true. had it worse. As bad as you may have had. Amen. Not taking nothing away from that. No. I just want you to be inspired and provoked to good works to know that there are success stories that came up from deeper than where you've gone. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And went farther than you have yet imagined for yourself. Amen. But you got to operate right. Because the reason you got to operate right is because God is fair. That's right. He's not a respecter of persons. He God. will deal with you not based on the fact that he like you. Mm. <laughs> that your hair looks pretty today. Mm. <laughs> That's right. But he will deal with you based on how you operate. Yes. And everybody has the opportunity to operate right. That's mm. right. That's right. Is that right? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You have the opportunity to operate. Unless you're a slave, you have a little bit of autonomy in your life. Mm. Most of us can go to bed when we want to go to bed. Yes. Get up when we want to get up. Yeah. And eat almost whatever yeah. we want to eat. Yeah. We can manage our free time how we choose. And it's with that free time that you really make big changes in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yes. Just little tweaks in your free time will make a huge difference in your life. Yeah, that's true. When you fly from New York to Miami, if you get off two degrees, that's right. you can wind up in Texas. Amen. That's right. That's right. Just a little tweaking can make all the difference. Amen. Then we have our spiritual pillar, which we was preaching about a couple of weeks ago. And of course, that spiritual pillar is in the middle of our prosperity. You have to notice we've been spelling prosperity. P is for the psychological pillar, R is for the relational pillar, O is for the operational pillar, and S is for the spiritual pillar. It's in the middle of it all. Okay? And it helps bear the load of all the others. And when you start living that way, where your spiritual pillar bears the load, you don't feel the strain on your life like you used to. Does that make sense? And we're building these pillars so that they can support something on top. So that something can rest on it. Anybody know what that something is? Yes. The glory yes. of God. When you build these areas of your life right, the glory of God rests on you. Mm. The only reason God's glory hasn't rested on your life the way he wants to is because you ain't built these pillars up right so it can you were made to carry God's glory. I'm going to say that again. Amen. You were made to carry like a crown. Amen. You were made Amen. to carry Amen. God's glory. Amen. Yes. You know, you see on TV how they teach models to walk. <laughs> and they put some, the book or something on their yeah. head, and they have to get real straight. Well, you need to practice that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. You need to practice yes. that. Yes. Because yeah. you were made to carry something. That's you got to right. 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 be straight. That's because right. you were made to carry the book. They're made to carry some clothes for the clothes to hang right on them, to get the walk so that you can admire the clothes. That's why they like tall, skinny models. You know that, right? Because the clothes hang better on them. That's all. Ain't about appeal or attraction because a couple hundred years ago they, they, they drew all the fat women because they were attractive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it wasn't about, it's about the fact that the clothes hang right like they want them to on them. And so they're showing off clothes, they're carrying the glory of Calvin Klein. Uh, <laughs> you see, it's not really about the mouth, it's about what they're wearing. Right. Amen. And she's coming down the catwalk wearing a Calvin Klein dress with flowers and floral yeah. design. Yeah. You see, it's about that. And so it's really about what you carry. Yeah. But they have to walk in such a way That's right. so as to carry it right. That's right. Amen. Amen. They walk like they depressed coming down the right. catwalk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the designer don't get no glory. That's Amen. right. That's true. Yeah. That's true. 
Mm. They're stumbling as they come down the catwalk. It takes away from the attention that should be placed on the design. And so you've got Ooh. to walk in such a way Ooh. as so that your design Ooh. can be glorified. Amen. Yeah. 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 And so we talked about mm. the spiritual pillar a couple weeks ago. And then we entered into what pillar last week? Anybody remember? The uh, body. Physical. The physical, that, that's the other P, P-R-O-S-P, mm -hmm. the physical pillar, right? And what did we say about the physical pillar? We, we, we went to the Word of God, amen, we went to the Word of God, we went to the Word of God, and we found out how God, you see, you want to know how God sees stuff, mm -hmm. and you want to use God's language, because God paints pictures, yes. because the truth of the matter is we really think in pictures, right? We don't think in words. We think in pictures. That's why we ask people, can you see what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, yeah. Can you see oh, yeah. what I'm saying? That's why when you pray, you better see what you're saying. Ooh. 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 If you can see what you're saying, Ooh. you can have what you're praying. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. You hear me? If you can see what you're saying, Jesus said, when you pray, Ask what you will while you're praying in prayer. This that when you're in prayer, that's when it's time to envision what it is that you desire, mm -hmm. that you know has been ordained of God. Woo! Thank you. Did you hear? Mm. And so we we went to the Word of God. We found out that God calls our bodies a temple. Yes. He calls us a building, but not any building, a, a special building. The building yes. that in every community throughout the whole world is the most sacred, revered, honored building. More than the courthouse, more than the meat market, that temple is always adorned and respected. That's true. And that's what God calls us. And he calls us a temple because we are the place where he desires to dwell. Amen. Amen. Again, he wants to rest his glory on us. Thank you. See? Thank you. Woo. And so he calls us a temple, and so we need to look at ourselves as a building. And ask ourselves, and in that book, Identity in Christ, one of your identities that we cover is you are God's building. And then we go into being a temple as well. But just a building. And we have to ask ourselves, well, if we're God's building, then how do we know if we're doing what we were built for? Oh. Mm. We have to make an assessment. Mm. We have to do what they call an appraisal. Mm. Yes. The Bible says examine yourself Amen. to make sure you're in the faith. And he was talking to Christians. Because you can be a Christian and you can drift yes. away from your destiny. Yes. You can drift away Ooh. from your original design. Ooh. You can drift away from your purpose Ooh. before you even realize it. Ooh. You can get off course in life real easy. Ooh. Real easy. If you're not paying attention. I was in the Navy. And I've been on boats. And I've steered boats. My son asked me the other day, have you ever driven a boat like that? It was in Florida. I said, yeah, I don't know. I said, I like the big ones, though. But regardless of the size of the boat, mm. if you don't keep your hand mm. on the wheel, if you don't steer with that hand in the right direction, your boat will drift yeah. naturally. Mm. If you are not intentional about how you live your life, mm. you will miss the mark of what God has for you. And you don't even have to try. You'll miss it. Just living life, you'll miss it. Just doing, the, I'm just doing what I got to do. You'll miss your destiny. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting up and getting on down and same thing every day. You're going to miss your destiny. <coughs> I ain't really paying attention. I ain't really making no decision. What's your goal? I ain't really got no goals. You're going to miss it. Mm -hmm. You have to be intentional. Mm -hmm. You have to steer. You can't get in the car and let go of the wheel. 
And despite what the bumper stickers say, God is not in the driver's seat. He's in the passenger seat. That's right. He's navigating for you. That's right. He's giving you advice. He's giving directions. But you're supposed to steer. Yes, Amen. Amen. Now, if you don't have your hands on the wheel with the antenna going somewhere, mm. you're not going to make it anywhere. Mm. Amen. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Same thing spiritually. Spiritually is life. Mm. Get that in your head. And when we talk about your spiritual life, we're talking about life. life. Because if you try to live life without your spirit connected to God, you're living like a power tool that's unplugged. Mm. Mm. Do you understand? Now, you can try to use a power tool on plug, but you risk damaging the tool. You can try to live your life unplugged from God, but you risk damaging yourself. Amen. Because you're not living the way you would desire. That's right. That's right. And not only that, you're not as effective That's right. That's right. as you're supposed to be. Because you're not plugged up. And so we talked about our, our physical pillar. Mm -hmm. And we found out that location is important to a building. Mm -hmm. When you're appraising a building, location is always important. They always tell you location, location. Mm -hmm. location. We found some little raggedy shacks, y'all, <laughs> in Panama City <coughs> that were worth $500,000. Oh, yes. For very small, tiny shacks. Now, I use that word shack intentionally because it looked like it's barely holding together. But because of its location, it don't look like much, but because of its relationship to important places and important people, it's worth a lot. And when you put your body in the right location, in relationship to what's important to God, it ups your value. Yes, amen. Yes, 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 yes. I said it ups your value. Yes. yes. When you put your body in the right location. You see, you can be of very much value, but if you're not in the right location, it brings you down. Yes. It's supposed to be in church and you in the club. Your value just went down. That's right. You're supposed to be on the job and you in bed. Your value just went down. That's right. Your location is very important. Not only do they look at location, they look at the highest and best use of the building. Is that right? Mm -hmm. When they're appraising the building, they want to know what is the highest and best use for this building. And when you're considering your life and what you're doing with your body, you have to consider, am I using my body to its highest and best use? Mm -hmm. Am I extending myself in the kingdom of God? Or am I sitting on my couch and wasting my time? Am I, is my body being used? Is my building being used to its highest and best use? Is it being utilized to its greatest degree? Am I using it for a club? Or am I going to use this building for a hospital? Am I going to sit around and eat bonbons? Or am I going to go start a, a, a women's sober house? Yes. What am I going to do? Because that requires your body to be somewhere else and yes. be used for a different purpose. Yes. 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 You see? Mm -hmm. Am I going to sit at home and feel sorry for myself? Or am I going to go back to school so I can be a blessing to some children? Amen. Yes. What am I doing with my body? Am I putting my body in the right position? Am I using it for the right purpose? That's right. Amen. And finally, the last thing we look at when we appraise a building, we look at its condition. Location, use, and condition. You know, I found out that if you don't take care of yourself, there's something about yourself that you don't like. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. so good. Wow. If you damage yourself, I've seen, I've seen doctors who love their minds and love the money they make, but they don't love their lungs. Yeah. Because I've seen around the corner of the hospital smoke. That's right. That says that there's something about themselves that they're unhappy with. Ooh. When you can intentionally do something to yourself consistently that you know is hurting you, 
so true. Yeah. That says something about you. That's true. Amen. Right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. It just is. Yeah, that's true. It says something about how you, you're unhappy with something and you're going to damage yourself. You're unhappy with something. And instead of doing something about it, you're taking out your anger on you. Mm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You're taking out your frustration on you. That's right. You're yeah. dulling your senses instead of dealing with your emotions. Mm -hmm. Because you're unhappy about something. And so we have to evaluate our condition and say, Am I in a good condition for the Holy Ghost to dwell in me and God to use me? Ooh. Or have I been damaging myself because I'm really not happy with my life and I don't see my purpose? That covers the physical. What's next? P-R-O-S-P-E. The economic health. The Bible says wisdom has built her seven others. And so sometimes we try to fix our life and we try to just fix one thing. Not realizing that everything's connected. Mm -hmm. Now you can't fix everything at one time. You have to start in one place. But you have to deal with it holistically and understand that it's connected. Is that right? It's connected. The chiropractors will tell you that. Anybody ever been to a chiropractor? Yeah. They'll tell you everything's connected. Yeah. I was having lower back issues not long ago, and I was feeling it in my groin. Mm -hmm. How that worked? Went and got all kinds of tests and thought all kinds of stuff was going on. They went through a battery of tests, couldn't find anything. Mm -hmm. Come to find out, it wasn't anything but a little something in my yeah. back yeah. that was affecting something up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, how that work? Yeah. The doctor said, because it's connected. It's connected. Wow. Wow. So I'm trying to fix it over here because this is where I'm feeling it. Not realizing that it's coming from over here where I didn't notice it. Right. Mm. And sometimes it's like that in our life. We try to fix something without getting to the root of the problem. Yeah. yeah. You see. Amen. And so if your money ain't right, it can affect you spiritually. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. It can affect your emotions. It can affect your relationships. Am I right? Yes. It can affect the way you operate. Yes. Am I telling the truth? Yes. Yes. It can affect your attitude. Yes. Yes. It can yes. affect your disposition. Yes. It can affect your relationship right. with God. You can yes. get mad yes. with God behind your money. Yes. Yes. Am I telling yes. the truth? Yes. That's true. You will get mad with God behind your money. Yes. yes. God, my money ain't right. My money looking funny right. now. Something ain't right now. I don't right. know, God. Right. I don't know if I can trust you like you said. Yeah. But my money looking funny. Yeah. Right? Yes. And God said, above all things, I want you to do what? Prosper. 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 And be, be in health. health. Mm -hmm. Prosper means move forward. Yep. Being in health really means being able to maintain what you've already opted out. Yeah. It's homeostasis. When you're in health, you have a, a balance in your yeah. life. You have what they call in science homeostasis, an equilibrium. That's healthy. Yes. Right? There's a certain equilibrium that you need of acids and balance. alkalines mm -hmm. and, and, and vitamins. There's a certain balance you need to keep your body healthy. And there's a certain balance you need to keep your life healthy. See, that's and right. And you have to pay attention to money because money matters. It does. You can't say, oh, I'm so spiritual that my money don't matter. God don't care nothing about no money. God don't need money. I heard people. God don't need money. No, God don't need money. But we do. <laughs> we need money. Why do we need money? What is money? Money is, is a tool. Money ain't even real, y'all. We made money up as a go-between. Money is a substitute. For the real stuff that we want to exchange. Yeah, bartering. Okay? Back in the day, we would just live off the land and follow the animals mm -hmm. and eat whatever was available. Mm -hmm. And it went straight from, from, from the ground to us. Yeah. Because we're all designed in such a way, every creature, this is how you know a creature from the creator. The creature is dependent 
on something that's eternal. Yeah. We all need something outside ourselves. No third days with no food. Mm -hmm. And you'll start to waste away. Mm -hmm. Because you need something outside of yourself to survive. Mm -hmm. God is the only somebody Amen. who don't need something from outside himself. Mm -hmm. Trees need something from outside themselves. People need something from outside themselves. Everything alive needs something from outside itself yeah. in order to survive. Amen. It's up God. God is the only self-sustaining one. Ooh. All right? Yes. He don't need nothing to survive. Amen. He's Amen. life itself. Yes. Everything needs something from him Amen. in order to survive. Mm. Right? And so when we go after what we need, we're meeting a need that God put in us. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. God designed us to get what we need outside of ourselves. Amen. Alright? Mm. Now, it became unfeasible to try to supply everything yourself. So we started to do what Shelly just said. We started to barter, we started to trade. Mm -hmm. I would trade my lamb skins yeah. for your, your wheat. Yeah. Because I needed wheat and you needed lamb skins. Right. But now as society got more sophisticated and things got more complicated, <coughs> we needed something else to make exchanges because I didn't have enough. Everybody didn't want lamb skins all That's the time. Right. That's right. Right? And though I had lamb skins, I couldn't get everything I wanted with the lamb skins just by trading it one for one. Because really? I need more eggs this week, and you already got one lamb skin. You said one lamb skin is enough for me. I ain't giving you my eggs. Mm -hmm. right? right? I need to trade for something else. Now I got to figure out a way to trade with somebody else for what they got in order to get that and trade for what you want. Yes. And the solution to that is called money. Right. That's the solution. That's the history of money in a nutshell. All right? That's the solution to our problem is this tool, this representation, this symbol. That piece of paper that you got ain't worth nothing. Nope. Them numbers that you see on the screen ain't really worth nothing. It's the value that they represent that's worth something. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. They represent value. And so when you go and you trade that dollar bill or you make that transaction with those little doo -doo -doo -doo, those numbers, <laughs> you're exchanging value. Mm -hmm. Now you might think I'm belaboring a point, but I'm belaboring the point intentionally. <clears throat> because I want you to know that some of y'all are praying for money. Mm -hmm. But what you gotta understand is God ain't just gonna give you money. What God will give you is he'll give you value. Amen. You already have value yes. that you can exchange for money. Amen. So you can exchange some money for the thing that you need. Yes. And if you understand how the exchange process works, then you'll start to see value in yourself that you didn't see before, that you can make some money off. There's a lady who seen, she, she got, I only seen one band. She probably got more than one. But I seen it twice. She got a van, just a regular old van. It ain't even new. She threw a sticker on the side. And she running around here picking up other people's children from school, taking them to daycare and other appointments where the parent can't get there in time to pick them up and be there for the appointment. Yeah. This sister looked at an old ragged van and seen value. Woo! Yeah. Woo! She's exchanging the value Woo. for some money yeah. that she can then go and do whatever she want to do with with Amen. the money because the money represents value for Woo. something else. That's right. That's right. And so when you pray, don't pray for money. Mm. Pray that God reveal your value. Amen. Woo. Woo. Because God set it up in order to get the most out of you. That he hid your ability to get other things in your value. The Bible says it like this. Your gift shall make room for you. Mm. You see, Ooh. God gave you something yeah, that's, that's right. going to provide for yeah. you in such a way Ooh. that when you share that value yeah. with others, they're going to reward you in kind. Amen. 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 
and then you can take what they give you Amen. in exchange for what you gave them, mm -hmm. and now you can go to the market. Amen. And here's, here's the thing, God's so brilliant. <laughs> the more value <laughs> you bring to others, yes. the more yes. rewards you get for bringing out. Mm -hmm. okay. The more value you bring, mm. the more rewards you get. So, in other words, the more you bless other folk, that's right. The more God bless you through them folk. Yes. Let me explain like this. Yes. If yes. you and nothing, I don't work at McDonald's. Mm. Ain't nothing wrong with McDonald's. <coughs> as an example, that's good work. And all honest work is honorable. Yes, that's right. Don't fool yourself. That's All right. honest work is that's honorable. Right. That's right. All right? Remember that when you ain't getting paid what you used to get paid for tricking. That's right. Mm -hmm. When you're working a decent job, that you got your dignity now. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. All Amen. honest work yes. is honorable before God and men. Yes. All right? So I'm just okay. using this as an example because in our society, people tend to use this as an example of, of low wages and mm -hmm. low income mm -hmm. and of something that anybody can do. Yeah. Okay? Sure. Anybody in theory could flip a burger. Mm -hmm. Working at McDonald's right. and working these fast food it's places is hard work. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People yeah. talk to you rude. Oh yes. You go home smell like food. Uh, it ain't no fun, right? Right. But it's honorable. Yes. But anybody in theory could stand there and flip that burger. And you can only flip one burger at a time. I mean, you can get real good and go down the line. I used to do that. Yeah. I used to scoop them, flip them, and scoop them, and flip them. Now, Burger King had the chalk grill. You put them in the right. grill and it rolls. Right. Anybody want to Burger King? Mm -hmm. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but when, when they got a grill, you actually literally got to scoop it up under and flip it. Scoop yeah, it, flip right. it, scoop it, flip it. And so, see, I, I know them. I used to do that thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so I'm not talking bad about it, okay? But in theory, people don't think much of it. They don't place much value on it. Yeah. So they don't pay the people who do it very much. Yeah. Because they can only hairdress them. I know we got some women who love to do hairdressing. But you don't make a lot of money dressing hair because you can only do it for one person at a time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get good and you can have two chairs going, I know. But that, that's the extent of it. You have to systemize it. You have to scale it in order to make more money. Okay? And so anytime you can only do something for one person at a time, anytime your, your value is something that people consider anybody can do, you don't have to be highly trained for it. You don't need any specialized knowledge for it. Then people are going to give you a little bit of money. That's right. For that little bit of that, they say I can flip a burger at home. What do I need you for? But when they go to that doctor, mm -hmm. right? Even though the doctor's only seeing one person at a time, yeah, that's right. But the doctor has some value that you don't have flipping burgers. The person can't can't say I can take care of myself at home. No. They go to that doctor because they have some specialized knowledge. Mm -hmm. yeah. They have some skill. Yes. And so people see it of more value. We went to some expensive restaurants when we was on vacation. I ain't bragging. I think it's kind of dumb, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. That's right. Because for the same thing you get at Captain D's, yeah. mm -hmm. on the beach in Panama City, you're going to pay 10 times. That's, that's right. right. That's, that's right. true. That's so true. That's just the way it is. is. You're right. That's just the way it is. And it ain't necessarily no better. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Right. I mean, they got the same stuff. So, right. A salmon is a salmon is a salmon. <laughs> you know, a flounder is a flounder. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> you know, a burger is a burger. That's right. How much you spend on that burger? Twelve dollars. Twelve dollars on a burger. Right. Now I can go up here and get two of them from the diners. <laughs> right. For three dollars. Right. 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 <laughs> a quarter of the cost, and I got me two burgers for the price of his one. Is that right? But I paid it, you know, we on vacation, and that's kind of what you do. It's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> it's dumb. But my point is, because of where we were at, mm -hmm. and the expectation and the value that yeah. people put on being near the water, yes. location. Right. Location, 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 location. There was a premium on the product. Mm -hmm. 
all because of perceived value. Mm. Same product, different perception of value. Mm. That's why you can't get mad when people price themselves higher than what you want to pay. Mm. Amen. Woo. You know, I've learned to respect people for that. I used to get mad because I had a poor mentality. How they gonna charge all that for this? That don't even make no sense. I ain't fooling with them, but they still in business. And somebody is paying what they asking because they know their value is. You know what I'm saying? Your problem is you don't know your value yet. And so you keep undercutting yourself and selling yourself short because you don't know what value you bring. Don't get mad at somebody else because they bring, they know what value they bring. They know how valuable they are. You know, your jealousy always speaks to your inadequacy. You got to understand, I'm not dissing you. I've learned this myself. If you can identify your emotions, they will indicate to you what's wrong with you. And now you can fix it. And so whenever I feel jealousy, I realize that there's an inadequacy that needs to be addressed. Does that make sense? Whenever you feel a, a negative emotion, understand that all that does, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. Right. 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 It means that you have a need that's been unmet. Right. Yeah. Woo! Mm. Mm. Every negative emotion mm. identifies an unmet need. And your needs were given to you by God. I just told you that God designed his creatures in such a way that they need something outside themselves to survive. It's okay to have needs. Amen. Let me say that again. Because in church, we sometimes act like we can't even have no needs. Oh, yeah. God is everything. God's supposed to be your water and your food. and your, he, he said that symbolically. He gave you real. He gave them real manna to eat. He didn't say, "Okay, y'all out of Egypt now. Uh, just enjoy me." No, he rained down manna. Mm, Why? Because they had a right. need. Yes. Now the question is, how you address those needs? And yes. we don't even recognize that you have a need. You just caught up in a blind emotion. Mm. Amen. And then you start doing stupid stuff. Yes. Come on. I can speak to stupidity because yes. I, I've earned a PhD in it. <laughs> You understand? <laughs> I heard your PhD yeah. in stupidity, so I can speak to it. Don't feel like I'm talking bad to you. I'm talking from experience. Yeah. All right? Yeah. When you recognize a need, mm -hmm. now you can address it. Mm -hmm. But if you just get caught up in the emotion and never ask yourself, what is this indicating? Every emotion indicates something. And negative emotions are not all negative. The Bible says be angry. Oh, yes. And sin not. not. Usually we associate anger yes. with a negative emotion, right? Yes. Because anger can be very destructive. Yes, it can. Yes. But now, God said that it ain't sin. No. Nope. You can be angry and disassociate yourself from the behavior that God would consider sin. Yes. So anger in and of itself is not sin. Mm -hmm. It's an emotion that's indicating something. Yes. Right? Inadequate. You may be justified in your anger. Maybe you need to tell somebody how you feel about how they've been treating you yes. in your anger. Yes. Maybe you've been maybe you've been suppressing some feelings yes. that you should not have suppressed, oh. and you you need to open your mouth and tell somebody yes. something, and then you won't be sitting there with ulcers because you're angry. Ooh. Mm. Thank you. Ooh. Mm. You see how the Bible says God God had, Jesus has become wisdom unto us. Mm. This Bible is telling you how to live That's right. and That's prosper right. with it. That's right. How to move forward. How to do better than you do. Do better tomorrow than you do today. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Don't imagine Warren Buffett or nobody and say, oh, God want me to be like that. No, God wants you to have more than enough. But what That's he's really right. concerned about is that you're moving forward. forward. That's what yes. prospering really is. Yes. Yes. Moving yes. forward. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. understand? Yeah. That's what yeah. prospering Really, it's not about having all the money in the world. It's about having more than enough than what you need. That's why David said, my cup runneth over. Oh, wow. You see, because until your cup is full, you Woo. really ain't got nothing to share. Mm. And God wants you to have something to share. Yeah. So he got to make your cup run over. Yes. Mm. Yes. Good. But he can't if you're a bad manager. 
he can't trust you. Mm. And so money is a tool that, that's been developed to help us exchange value so that bartering doesn't have to be so complicated. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I got to hurry now. There's five things you need to know about money. See, y'all thought I was going to just teach you how to give me the money, right? Everybody <laughs> thinks that you want to take everybody's money. Yep. I ain't asked you for nothing. <laughs> never have and never will. Thank, Thank you, know. Jesus. Thank you you want to give into something, you give. If you don't, that's your business. But uh, you if you know what's good for you. You ever notice how rich people give a lot? Yes. <laughs> and poor people? Yeah. There's a correlation there. Yeah. <laughs> There's a correlation. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? Yes. So you can stay poor if you want to. Yes, teach. As a matter of fact, the way I learned how to prosper was by giving. There you go. There you go. When I start to give, yeah. and I realize that I can live yes. while I give, yes. 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 I realized that I was capable of doing more than yes. I thought I could. Yes. <clears throat> Y'all hear me. And the only thing really holding you back from doing more than what you're doing right now is what you think you can do. Yeah. Right? Ooh. <laughs> right? Y'all don't get that. Yeah. See, that should have took the lid off of all your limitations right there. Man. The only thing keeping you from being more, having more, doing more is your thoughts about what you're capable of. Amen. That's why I'm always struggling to press myself into another level of understanding. Yeah. Because if I can understand something just a little mm -hmm. bit better, yeah. then I can I can operate on another level. Yeah, that's right. Amen. That's right. The only thing holding me back is my understanding of how to operate. Ooh. Because I don't know how to operate on that next level, I can't go there yet. But as soon as I understand how to operate there, I can go there. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. 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 When I first started to understand how to do some things with money, Trying to buy houses with no money down. Yeah. Oh, that blessed me so much. Yes. Yes. I, I wanted to get in real estate, but when I ordered that Carlton Sheets off of TV, anybody old enough to remember Carlton Sheets? What Late night mean? TV, no money down. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's oh, how yeah. I got in real estate, right there. Oh, wow. And it's blessed me ever since. That's wow. right. That's Seriously, right. I'm just, yeah. just telling you, it was wow. my, it was getting, the Bible says, oh, you're getting. Get an understanding. We were trying to start businesses. We were doing a couple other things I was interested in, with, but I couldn't get in. I ain't got no money. How am I getting that? Yeah. Boop, no money down. Yeah. Yeah. Teach your strategies creatively to get into real estate. Yeah. And, yeah. and we, done get, we done got a couple. Yes, you did. Without any money. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because we grew and prospered in our understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not because we were lucky no. or because, you know, somebody liked us, yeah. but because we went and got an understanding yeah. that unlocked our potential. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. Awesome. There's things that you can do that you don't know you can do. Amen. Oh, have mercy. Amen. <laughs> you got God inside of you. Yeah. Amen. I keep reiterating that because if that ever really, if you ever get a hold of that notion, that you got the creator of all things inside of Ooh. you all the time. Yes. One, it will deliver you from some hangups. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. And two, it will lead you into your promised land. Yes. Yes. Because like the sister said, you won't be looking at your inadequacies no more. Yes. You won't be looking at your weakness. You'll realize that you have all sufficiency already Ooh. inside of you. And there's nothing you can't do because of who's in you. There are five areas, five components, five building blocks. I tried to make them like those little blocks. I went back there and looked, but we ain't have <laughs> the letters on it. You know, I was going to spell it out smart. You remember building blocks, those little wooden things with letters yeah. on them, yeah. kids, yeah. right? Um, there's five building blocks in this pillar. The economic pillar. Mm. I need you to get these five building blocks. They spell smart. Okay. You got to be smart with your money. Hear me now. You got to be smart with your money to do all that God wants you to do. I know some really good preachers who ain't no good with money. 
and it has stifled their ministry. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm just telling you the truth. Yeah. Good preachers. Woo! We they will preach your socks off. <laughs> God Almighty. And you will feel the Holy Ghost. They can prophesy mm -hmm. and interpret dreams, mm -hmm. speak in tongues, and lay on hands. Yes. But cannot manage money to save their life. Mm -hmm. And their church has been half this size for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Might swell a little bit right there. And it's not because God don't like them. It ain't because they can't be prosperous. It ain't because they ain't good preachers. It's because they don't understand administration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's some preachers who ain't no good. Uh, they're mediocre at best when you listen to them. Mm -hmm. But they got these great big churches. And you're like, how does this work? Yeah. This guy ain't even a great speaker. Yeah. Yeah. But he got somebody. Or he knows something about administration. And how to manage money. And manage people. Yeah. And manage resources. Yeah which accommodates and facilitates for whatever else he's yeah. doing so he don't have to be that good of a speaker mm -hmm. to have a great big ministry. Mm -hmm. You see? And sometimes, well, I said that for this reason, because I want you to understand that there is a disconnect oftentimes in how we see money mm -hmm. and how we think of spirituality. Mm -hmm. And you can be very spiritual and still be broke. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can be highly favored of God and yes. be broke. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can be operating in spiritual gifts yes. and be a very godly person and be broke. Yes. And it's not because God is testing you. Mm -hmm. It's because you don't know what to do with what God gave you. Yeah. See, you hear me? Because you don't know what to do with what God gave you. Whether it be the reach, the money you already got, mm -hmm. or the value you already bring. Mm -hmm. Woo! Amen. 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 In the Navy, we used to have the saying, choose your rate, choose your faith. And what that your rate was your job, yeah. rating was your job. Yeah. Okay? And so when you choose your job, you choose everything that go along with that job. To include the upward mobility opportunities that do or do not exist. Right. And so you want to be very careful going into the military what job you choose. Yes. Because it will determine your career trajectory for the rest of your time in the military. Wow. You choose your rate, now that has chosen your fate. Woo. That's good. That's good. But let me tell you something, that's not just in the military. When you pick your job, when you decide what, what you think you can do, when you decide what you will sell it for, when you decide what you won't sell it for, mm -hmm. when you decide what you're going to pursue with your time mm -hmm. and, and what's temporary and what's permanent in your life. Mm -hmm. You see, just because you got to do something right now don't mean that's permanent. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen the next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? It does not have to define who that's you are. Right. right. It's just a pit stop on your destiny. That's right. And you need to learn right. how to use Ooh. it well to, to catapult you That's into right. your destiny. Look, Joseph got to the palace, not by way of knowing somebody in the palace. He got to the palace through a, a pit and a prison. That's right. That's right. A pit and a prison took him to a palace. Yes. Wow. You may be in a pit today. But I'm here to tell you, it can take you to a palace. Yeah. 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 You might yeah. feel like you're in a prison today. That's right. But I'm here to tell you, it can right. take you to. There were, I'll tell you, there were so many times I was in the military yeah. and I was over in Iraq and I was over yeah. on a boat and I just wanted to get out because I was miserable because I didn't like my yeah. boss and, and whoever yeah. your boss is kind of makes you feel like the whole military is that way. Mm. But I didn't know that was setting me up for some right. other stuff. That's right. I didn't know that was going to give me preferential treatment when That's I applied right. for a government job. That's I didn't right. know that that was going to give me preferential treatment when I applied for some loans. That's right. I didn't know. You understand know what I'm saying? Right. Come on, That's right. I didn't know that that, that which felt like a prison yes. was setting me up for Amen. a prison. Yes. But yes. now you know. Yeah. Now you can do something different. Yeah. And you don't have to suffer and be miserable so long thinking the wrong way about your situation. Yes. That makes sense. Yes. The five components that I gotta get into quickly. I wish I had more time with you, but it is what it is. The first component is to understand that you are simply a steward. 
In the Bible, a steward is somebody who would manage the affairs of someone else. And in so doing, they got to benefit from being in that space and managing those affairs. For instance, a wealthy person would have a steward over their house. Yeah. That head steward would govern, you know, when, when the animals got fed, when the, when the servants got fed, uh, 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 who did what, would keep his business going, would even go to town and make, and make trades and deals with the authority of the Lord, but they're just a manager. But because of their exalted position as a manager, as a steward, they got to enjoy some of what was their master's. Mm -hmm. yes. Today we might call that commission. Yes. They got a certain commission. They got, they got a certain level of enjoyment. And here's something that you got to understand in life. When you bring value, mm. you get to enjoy living a little higher on the hall yes. based on the value Woo. that you bring. The Woo. CEO yes. gets to enjoy some perks that Woo. the average employee don't get to it's enjoy right. because right. of their level of stewardship. Yes. Are y'all tracking? Yes. yes. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't want to go too fast, because mm -hmm. this is important. Yeah. I'm only going to deal with this this one session, and then we got to move on. Mm -hmm. Because there's some other things we got to touch on later. That's why you got to be at church. That's right. Yeah. Ooh, that's if right. you miss last week, you miss what to do with your body. I tried to recap for you. <laughs> and everybody who was here last week is mad at you. I know. Because you made <laughs> me have to recap, because my heart is a pastor's heart, and I want you to understand. The Bible says I will give you passes after my own heart oh, and lead you with knowledge and understanding. And so the reason I recap every week isn't just to hear myself speak. It's right. because I care so much about Thank those who you. wasn't here. Thank and I want you. you to get an understanding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My ego wants me to get on here and do a good show and put it on YouTube and become popular. <laughs> it's coming. But my heart says no, take your time and review because they may not again. What's the point of passing the church if people ain't growing it? Amen. What's the point of trying to be a celebrity and get what's the point? That's not my assignment. You're my assignment. And so I got to do what you need. Amen. And I can't go any further than you allow me. Does that make sense? That's why I need you to be here so we can move forward. Yes. If you're not here, then I feel like I gotta back up a little bit. Put y'all through some remedial training for those of who get because we can't leave nobody behind. No child left behind. Oh. <laughs> we can't leave nobody behind. Thank you. So we gotta back up and repeat. Thank you. Thank you. That's why we stay in a little bit longer. I could do a 25 minute sermon. I've done them before. Thank you. I can't. She don't think I can, but I can. <laughs> I, mean, I, I did them for seminary all the time. I had to write them out, I had to present them, and it had to be a certain period of time. And you had to send your, your video in to the professor, and he was judged on, on timing and other things. Yeah. And I did it. I, I survived. I, I, I passed. <laughs> Believe it or not. Yeah. But when I get in here, I get so excited to share with you again. Yeah. So I that that I take a little more time. Just a little okay. more. I just to try to relate that. Yeah. The yeah. first yeah. idea you got to get is that you are a steward. Yes. That's right. Nothing belongs to you. That's right. God has entrusted you with a little bit. Just a little bit. Yes. And he's watching to see what you do with it. The first principle of money is know that it's not yours. That's right. You are a steward. You know, on my job, we go out of town and we don't have a regular expense account like you would if you were a corporation, but with government they reimburse you for certain things so you have to pay for them up front and then they reimburse you. It's kind of like an expense account but yeah. there's some limitations on it. It's not like if I worked at one of the big banks. Mm -hmm. And so, but an expense account, even though somebody else is going to foot the bill, mm -hmm. because you know that it's going to be reviewed, mm -hmm. you're a little more careful okay. how you spend. That's, that's right. You have the liberty to spend and you know it's going to be reimbursed. But you're a little careful with it because you know it's going to be reviewed. Yeah, that's right. Well, I want you to know is that whatever God gave you, you're free to do with what you want to do with it. But you got to know that whatever you do with it is going to be reviewed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's going to come a time where you're going to have to stand before God right. and give an account for yeah. what you did with what He gave you. That's right. Yeah. That's so true. Right. Yeah. 
Not just how you sinned, but how you managed. Right. You see, God ain't looking to send nobody to hell. He ain't looking, oh, did you sin? Let me see if I can find some sin. <laughs> I'm going to get you up out of here. Huh? He did everything he could to keep you from there. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. shed his blood to keep you out of there. Yeah. So yeah. stop condemning yourself, thinking that God's looking for faults to find in you. He's not. He's looking to purify you. That's right. So when faults come up, he only brought them up so you can deal with it. So you can bring them back to him and y'all can talk it out. Y'all can work it out. That, that's why he allows you to see your inadequacies. So you can run back to daddy and say, daddy, I got this problem. Can you talk about it? That's the right perspective. It is. Come on. Thank you. But you're a steward. Everything, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We have been given as caretakers over a portion of it. And as we show ourselves faithful, he rewards us with greater responsibility. Mm -hmm. One poor lady once told me, and I don't mean poor as in financially, because she's retired and doing all right. I mean poor as in understanding. She said, well, when we get to heaven, there won't be no work. I said, uh -oh. Have you read your Bible? You go on to heaven temporarily. Just a little piece of time. When Jesus comes back to establish a new heaven and new earth, you're coming back with him. And you're going to spend the rest of eternity on earth, not praising God, but living a life of eternity productively. That's right. Yeah. God gave Adam work before the fall. That's right. That's right. Work is not evil. No. That's right. And when you find your life's work, you'd be glad to go do it. Yeah. I work on my sermons. I write my books. I pray and fast and seek God's face. I call you guys and don't get paid one dime and don't miss it. Because I found my life's work. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. When, when I used to teach school, I couldn't wait till Monday morning. That's right. Because I found my life's That's work. right. That's right. Do you understand? It wasn't drudgery. It wasn't a curse because I found what I was created for. Yes. And when you find what you created for, yes. you'll be excited to go to work. It don't have to be ministry in this context. Yes. Your real ministry is out there. Remember That's Ephesians right. chapter 4? Yes. It says that it's my job to equip you for your ministry. Yes. Your ministry is out there. Yes. And so when you understand that you're a steward and your joy is being a good steward, yes. your greatest reward is being hearing, well done. Yes. Well done. Yes. My good and faithful servant. We don't have time to get to my base text. I just got to explain. My base text is Matthew 25, 14 to 30. I was going to have somebody stand up and read it, but now I'm talking a little too long. We don't have time for all that because it's very long. But that's the story of the talents. Yeah. And just in a nutshell, there were three sermons. Yes. And each of them received talents. The Bible said, according to their Mm -hmm. Now, a talent was a bag of gold. Mm -hmm. One received one bag of gold. Mm -hmm. Another received two bags of gold. Another received five yeah. bags of gold. Was it? Five. Okay, thank you. Five bags of gold. Now, the story goes that the man who received five bags of gold, when his master came back to evaluate how well they had managed what he gave them. Yes. Listen to me now. Your whole life yes. is an opportunity to manage what God gave you. Amen. Amen. You're not on trial every day. Amen. Whether or not you're going to teeter off into the fires of hell. Especially if you're saved, heaven and hell is done. Amen. That's right. That's the right. one requirement for heaven. Now I know that we like to play mind games with this, but the one requirement God put in that Bible for heaven is that you believe in Jesus Christ mm -hmm. That's right. and what he did on that cross for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that God raised him from the dead. Yes. Amen. And that he's your Lord. That's, right. yes. That's it. Yes. Now I can give the definitions of what it means to be a Lord and all that. And, and, and get, get real narrow. Mm -hmm. But the truth be told is God 
open his arms real wide and try to get as many of y'all as he can. Thank you. See, we got the wrong perception. We got to see how our father sees us. That's right. He's not trying to get rid of any of his children. He's not trying to find fault with his children. He's just trying to make improvements. Amen. You see? He wants the best out of you and the best for you. And so he gives you something to start with. God told Adam and Eve, take dominion over the whole earth. That's right. But then he gave them something to start with. What did he give them to start with? He gave them a little garden. Okay, garden. Yeah. Yeah. A little garden we call Eden. Eden. The Bible says it was a little garden. He told them, the earth is yours. The whole world is your oyster. But he gave them a garden to manage to begin with. You see, some of y'all are looking at what you have now to manage, and you're despising it because you don't understand God's process. Wow. One reason I can come up in here excited every Sunday and not be discouraged, even though in my mind I think I'm better than some of the preachers that got thousands of members of churches. That's right. And their church, you understand what I'm saying? I think I'm ten times better than them, but I'm not discouraged. No, I didn't get that for no hand clap. I'm just letting you know how I think as a man. I think I'm good. That's right. I think what I got to say is important. Oh, yes. I think I'm preaching that word right. Yes. Yes. You see, there's a lot of people who ain't, who That's look right. like they're doing better than me when it comes to ministry. Yes. But the reason I'm not discouraged is because I understand God's process. Yes. Yes. I understand God's process. That's right. I understand that He's never going to give you the world to begin yes. with. He's not going to give you an oak tree to begin with. He's going to give you a seed. That's right. That's right. That's right. And then, based on what you do with that seed. Yes. Well, God just ain't enough. He know it ain't enough. Mm -hmm. Now, what you going to do with that seed? Yes. God just is falling short. I know he know it's falling. He knew it was not enough when he gave it to you. Yeah. Woo. He wants to see what you going to do. God knows that you are awesome like him. You you got God's DNA in you, the Bible says. Yeah, God, yeah. The Bible says in the book of Peter, first Peter, mm. it says that you now have the word of God, which is his seed. Mm. Yeah. When the Bible talks about seed, it's talking about somebody's DNA. Woo. You got yeah. God's DNA Woo. in you. Woo. Not just when you created in his image, but then you were reborn. Oh, you got an upgrade. Yeah. When you got born in here, you got an yeah. upgrade. Yeah. You got re yeah. yeah. I mean, We used to talk about her infusions. Upgrade. You got an infusion yeah. of God's Woo. seed yeah. in you. Yeah. So his initial uh, design of the DNA got corrupted, so he came back and he infused Woo. some more. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, that, that got messed up. Uh -huh. I'm going to give it another shot. So he put his DNA in you. When you are born again. Now he knows you can do the impossible. Now he knows that when you walk on water, he can call you out of boat. Not because of you, but because of what's in you. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah.
got called to me. Woo! I'm a handicap. That's why when you get over your drugs, yeah. when you get over your alcohol, when you get over your lust, yeah. you find that you have a ministry. Yeah. God wants to give the world a rehabilitation. Yeah. Some of us, God wants to give the world a child care. You ever notice when you enter into somebody else's world, into their career field, yeah. into something that they're really good at, they start using language that you don't yeah. understand. Yeah. They start speaking in tongues that you can't quite comprehend. Yeah. And you're like, what are they talking about? Because they're in their world. Yeah. Yeah. And what God wants to do is he wants to take those who are of his kingdom, of his household, and send them into the worlds to exercise dominion. Yeah. And so there's something that you're real good at. Yeah. And God meant for you to be real good at. That's right. And God's going to use that to help you overcome some other stuff That's that, right. that you ain't so good at. Thank you, God. And you're so good at People are going to see you overcoming and not just overcoming. The Bible doesn't say you're overcoming. The Bible says you're more than a conqueror. That's right. Woo. That's right. And so you ain't going to just go in and take over. You're going to do more than take over. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Oh, you're going to do more than just take over. You're going to win the hearts and minds of the people while you're there. Ooh. You're going to make an influence for the kingdom of God yeah, while you're yeah. there. You're going to push yeah. back some darkness yeah. and establish some light yeah. and show the people how God yeah. did that. They might have been used to telling used cars and stealing and taking folk money, but yeah. now, like that movie Five Wheel, you got to tell the truth. You're going to tell people what's really wrong with you because that's how God infiltrates yeah. and God going to bless you and you still going to do better yeah. than they do. Doing it his way. Yeah. You infiltrated that world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're 
exercising dominion according to the glory of God. And the reason God's going to use your struggles to overcome your weaknesses because nobody ever overcomes weakness and weakness. Success is built on success. That's right. And so stop thinking so much on where you fail. And remember where you succeed. And use that success to scaffold to another level of success. That's how this works. And so you're a steward. That's the first thing you got to recognize. That ain't none of this mind no way. I'm just here to manage it, and God let don't let me enjoy something. Look, when that check come in, how much of that check you get to enjoy? A small portion. Yeah. You got bills, yeah. bills, and yeah. bills, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so, in the in those bills, you are keeping a system perpetuated. You're managing your money. You're divvying it up, and then a little bit is left over for you to enjoy and do what you want. You got to feed yourself. You got to clothe yourself. You got to house yourself. All this is stewardship. All that is honorable before God. God don't like folk who don't pay their bills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, he like the folk. He don't like them. Like <laughs> your credit score is a representation of your Ooh. reputation. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, okay? That's good. Your credit score is a representation of your reputation, but your reputation can be redeemed. That's why the Bible says that a good name is rather to be chosen than gold. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's a good name? Your reputation. What's your reputation in today's society? Your credit score? Ooh. You can get more with your credit score than you can with your cash. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Look, when folks go buy a house, they only got so much cash. But their credit is what get, makes the difference. They got they got 5% for an FHA loan. I know loans. I know mortgages. I know what I'm talking about. They got 5% for an FHA loan. But the other 95% come off their reputation. That's right. If your reputation is so bad, they won't give you that 95%. Right. But if you got a decent reputation, right. then they're going to give you 95% of what it costs mm -hmm. based on your reputation. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a minute. 95% of what it costs mm -hmm. based on your reputation. Mm -hmm. Wow. So your reputation now is more important than that 5% that you got in your hand. That's right. Wow. Ain't the Bible right? The yeah. Bible is so right. Always. Yeah. So a good name is better than the gold that you got. That's right. Because with your good name, you can get 10 times the gold. That's right. This is real. I'm not, this, this is how mortgages work. Anybody know more? This is how this thing works. This is how credit works. That's and right. it's in your Bible before they came up with a credit card. That's right. That's right. Credit cards didn't come out to the 1950s. Okay, so the first thing you got to get in your head is not about hoarding resources. That's right. It's not about accumulating all the money you can, it's about being a good steward. Yes. It's about being a good job for the one who entrusted you with what you got. Yes. That's the first block you've got to build in your life. you got to stop looking at your money like it's yours. Yeah. And start looking at it like, it, like it's something that you need to manage well for somebody else. I know people who work at banks who can't balance their own check. Mm -hmm. I know people who work for Fortune 500 companies who can't balance their own checkbook, but they do a good job on the job, but they don't do it for themselves. Oh. And sometimes there's a disconnect in our own personal right. stuff because emotions get involved right. and we don't think clearly about right. our stuff. You ever notice that you can give somebody good advice, but then you find it hard to follow it yourself? Yeah, that's true. That's because of what all gets involved when it's yours. And so you got to take you out the equation and say, you know what? All this that I'm managing in my life really ain't mine. Yeah. Amen. That's the first block you got to get. It really, even this church, I said, I just work here. Yes. Why? Because I'm taking myself out of the equation. This is really God's. I'm just going to manage it. Yes. I'll manage it to the best of my ability. See, now that's the key word. If you go back to Matthew 25, God bless y'all. If you go back to Matthew 25, 14 to 30, you'll notice that he gave them talents based on ability. Get that in your head. So what do you want to increase? Lord, give me more talents. Give me more bags of gold. No. You want to increase your 
ability. Because when you increase ability, more bad goals come from you. Because he gave them the goal based on their ability. You see? So God has given you what you got based on what you've proven to be your ability. Mm -hmm. So, if you increase your ability, come on, it will come. You'll increase what God gives you to manage. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Second thing you gotta get down is that you are a manager, so you have to understand management principles. You have to start studying how to manage. Well, you will never be able to be rich if you can't budget. That's right. That's true. There are people who have a lot of money who aren't rich. They live in big houses. Mm -hmm. They drive fancy cars. Mm -hmm. And they in debt to their they neck. And they're stressed out and can't sleep. Yep. Yep. I'm telling you, I know this because I used to be one of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? Over a million dollars in debt mm -hmm. when we filed macros. Mm -hmm. I'm telling them myself. But I don't learn the lessons, so I'm trying to share them with you. That's right. And they all come out this body. That's right. You see. That's right. And so it's not about how much you accumulate. In the finance world, we say it like this: It ain't what you earn; it's what you keep. Wow. It's what you have left over. It's how your cup runs over that matters. You see. But if you can't budget, you ain't got no cup. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. If you can't budget, you don't really have a cup. Everything God poured just, just landing flat on the saucer and spilling out on the floor. Mm -hmm. You don't know where your money going. Because you don't understand management principles. You won't plan. Your timing is off. Mm -hmm. And you won't operate right with your money. That's right. PTO. Anybody know anything about PTO? Yeah. PTO is that time that they give you off. It's that little extra fluff that you, that you still get paid for. You see, it's a fringe benefit for being a good steward. That's right. Is that right? Yeah. PTO. And when you think about management, you got to think about PTO. You got to think about your planning. Do you actually plan your money? Do you actually plan with your money? Have you actually just sat down and wrote down a plan? And, 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 and have you actually went and found out if the numbers that you're coming up with make sense? That's right. Mm -hmm. Do they add up, first of all? Right. Second of all, what percentage of your income should you even be spending on rims? Right. <laughs> right. Right? You, you over at Rent and Roll. <laughs> your income and going to a house or a mortgage that is going to rent and roll. And you look pretty rather down the street, but you homeless. It's so true. Because you don't have the management principles in place to plan for nothing. You ain't got the patience to see God's timing and say not now, but later. You see? I figured out a while back that you can have almost everything you want if you're patient. Mm. Not just patient and say I'm waiting, but patient in how you plan your money. Okay. If you're patient in how you plan your money, you can get this this year. Right. Keep it. Yeah. Maintain it well. That's right. You got to maintain it well. Next year you can get that. Mm -hmm. Keep it. Maintain it well. Two years later, you can get something bigger and better and different. Keep that. Maintain it well. Amen. All the while, you're increasing your ability. You're, right. you're, you're, you're maintaining yes. health yes. because you're keeping what you got right. right. Yes. See, if you if you got nice lawn furniture that you let get nasty in the in the yard, right. then you're going to feel like you need to buy more lawn furniture right. you because you didn't cover right. it up. Yeah. Because you was too lazy to put it away when you knew it was about to rain. Right. Right. And so now you're about to go spend oh, another yeah, couple hundred right. dollars on some yeah, lawn furniture yeah, yeah. because you were stupid. That's right. Because you didn't you didn't have the patience. So you can have some nice lawn furniture. You can have your riding lawnmower, right? And you can have what else you want out there? A little gazebo if you just take your time. 
And when people pass by your house, they see all these nice things. And they don't know that it took you a while to get it. Amen. And then they look at it and they stupid. They don't understand PTO. And their timing is off. And they go borrow a whole bunch of money, more than they can afford to pay That's back. Right. So they can have it all right now. How long have you been living without that thing that you just got to have right now? But some kind of way you just got to have it now? That right now? Today? Right now I got that. And you're going to die? You feel like you're going to have an anxiety attack if you don't have it now? And you've been living 40, 50 years without it? I've been doing just fine. And now you got to have it. And you're going to burden yourself with a debt you can't afford so you can have it right now. I need it now. You hear me, God? <laughs> and then you're mad if you can't get it right now. Sometimes people do you a favor by not giving you That's what you right. want. Amen. 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 Sometimes that, you see, what you got to do, you got to get smart to figure out what they think. The people who, they want to sell you stuff. The banker want to sell you his money. Because you know a loan is nothing but money repackaged and sold to you mm -hmm. for more money back. That's right. more yeah. money. They want to sell you their money. So if they won't give you the loan, after looking at all you got going on, you need to figure out what they know that you don't. That's right. Because you're sitting there asking for something that people who make money, make money off of giving it to you, and they don't want to give it to you, you might be stupid for asking for it. <laughs> I got to run. I got one time you can give me after turning up. Sorry. You might be dumb for asking for it. Because they know money and you don't. And they know how you should be spending money and you don't. And you asking for something on a on a on a on a computer that you're gonna pay a hundred dollars a month for. That in three months you could you could just save your money, money and went pay cash. But now you're gonna pay another nine months on that three hundred dollar right. computer, a hundred dollars right. a month, and Aaron's gonna love you. Yeah. Huh? They, they, they gonna love you. Huh? That's right. And well tell the truth. Yeah. They pay their loan, people gonna love you. Yeah. Cause for a hundred dollars you're gonna pay back how much? Eighty now? I don't know how much it is. But wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. For like two hundred dollars, you're gonna pay back. You're gonna pay back some crazy interest. And, 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 and it's, a, it's a fee in two weeks. That's when you right. really do the math, I have been to these places. I know what they do behind the scenes. Some of that stuff is a thousand percent interest. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm not kidding you. Yeah. 300 to a, if you get 300 percent interest, you got a deal at a payday loan. That's right. 300 percent interest is what you're going to pay because you wouldn't save a little money. That's right. You had to borrow a hundred dollars. A hundred? And pay back 165 in two weeks. That's right. If you do the crazy. math, that's some crazy interest mm -hmm. over a year. That's crazy. Crazy. You're paying sure a high is. premium for your money. Mm -hmm. So you got to learn management principles. You got to learn how to how to plan. You got to learn proper timing, and you got to learn how to operate with correct ratios and. Just look at, it, it's real simple math. It ain't even complicated. It ain't no calcul calculus or algebra or geometry. It's simple math. Anybody can do it. And if you can't do it, there's people here who can help. All right. Do you hear it? Next thing you got to understand is God appreciates assertiveness. You have to be assertive. God, in this chapter, when you go back and look at it, you'll find out, you'll find out, that he rebuked the man with the one tap right. because he buried him. He said the least you could have done yes. was be assertive enough to take it to the bankers and get just a little, little small bit. interest on it. Right. He was mad with him. He yeah. said, I'm lazy, unprofitable servant. Yeah. You see, God expects you to be profitable for him. Amen. He expects whatever he gives you for you to come back with more. That's what he expects out your life. Mm -hmm. 
That's what God expects out of you. And he's not being unreasonable. No, he's not. He's not being demanding because if a little seed this big can produce a great big oak tree, what in the world can you produce? Woo! Yes, yes, yes. You don't know what you're capable of. That's right. And so God expects assertiveness. You ought to be looking for opportunities to grow your money. If you ain't looking for opportunities and legitimate opportunities yes. to grow your money, you're wrong. You're wrong. And when you get retirement age, you ain't going to have nothing. That's and you're right. going to be mad and broke and depending on the government to take care of you. Yes. And your government is not God. Yes, they are. And God gave you everything. Y'all hear these stories of these little janitor ladies who, who, who lived like they was poor all their life, but saved up all this money and invested it. And then they, and there was this little black woman in Virginia and gave away all this money in scholarships. Thousands upon, that, hundreds of thousands of dollars in scholarships at the end of her life. Yeah. And nobody knew she even had money. And she was a janitor all her life. And had several children and was able to give away such an impressive amount mm -hmm. and had no education herself. Amen. None to speak of, like an eighth grade education or something. I, I got a great uncle, God bless the dead. Got a great uncle. This man could not read and write, but some kind of way, he held on to a job where he became a supervisor. He bought land. He traded cows. He said, Junior, you see them cows out there? That's $5,000 right there. Every, every cow is five. And this was 20 years ago. He was telling me this. I don't know how much a cow worth now. But he told me every cow he had out there in the yard was $5,000. This man had land. This ignorant man. Ignorant man from Enfield, North Carolina somewhere. Huh? Couldn't read and write, never got past what, what grade? I don't know. Never got out of elementary school. In fifth grade. But you know what? When I went to go visit them, what he told me to do, he said, Now, Junior, now that you got a job, now that you're in the military, you're doing well for yourself, make sure you get you some blue chips. <laughs> what is a blue chip? <laughs> I had to go look it up. Now, I I am college educated at the time, and all of a sudden in the military, and didn't know what a blue chip was, but this ignorant, fifth grade education, <laughs> supervisor who don't raise his children, <laughs> own his own house, own land all the way down to the corner, had cows cross the field, yeah, was telling me to buy some blue chips. <laughs> and I found out that blue chips are stocks in the, right. in the top 10 companies in the world. Woo. Right. And he was telling me, boy, go be a servant. Yes. Don't just take your money and spend your money. Go invest your money. Mm -hmm. Now, if my great uncle, <laughs> anybody got more than a fifth grade education than him? Mm -hmm. Anybody got less than a fifth grade education? Ms. Rob Ms. Robert owned the house himself. A couple of houses <laughs> and driving a nice car yeah. mm -hmm. and, and, and didn't even it wasn't even born in America. Right. What's your excuse? And I started reading his Bible too, by the way. Right. 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 What's your excuse? Right. Show right. some right. assertiveness. Mm -hmm. He said, you lazy and wicked servant. Right. Take from him what I gave him and give it to the man who's productive. That's right. See, yeah. the rich keep getting richer, and the poor keep getting poor. Well, stop thinking like a poor person. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. That's so good. Get out that category. That's right. That's bad company. Bad company. <laughs> I'm broke, and you broke, and all my friends yeah. broke. I need some new company. Hey, so yeah. I got to look. You ain't got to go rub right. elbows with nobody. It's in a book. It's, in a book. Mm -hmm. it's on YouTube. That's right. It's on Netflix. That's right. I, we was watching. Now I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a little documentary geek. Right. <laughs> oh goodness. Surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> but I had her watching this documentary with me on on money. Money explained on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that was some yep. good stuff. Yeah. It talked about mm -hmm. credit cards. Mm -hmm. It talked about gambling. Mm -hmm. 
It talked about uh, ponds and get rich quick schemes. Oh, yeah. It talked about uh, uh, student loans. I mean, it, it, it was yeah. good. It, and it explained, it broke it down with cartoons, y'all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, I tell people, anytime you really want to understand something, go to the library, which is free. Check you out a book, which is free. Or a video, we just go get video. Yeah. Or a video, which now you got everything on, on your phone. Everything. Everything on your phone. But go get a children's version. Because the children's version got the same information as the adult version, but it ain't as complicated. I'm telling you what I didn't get myself. Okay? Go get the children's version of what you want to learn. Start there. Don't be too embarrassed. Humble yourself. There you go. And get that children's book. Watch that little cartoon video on YouTube instead of watching all the cat shows and the dancing and the and the and the and the twerking and all that foolishness, <laughs> right? Okay. And watch you something on how to manage money. That's, That's right. right. That's, That's right. right. Because Jesus said that if you're not faithful with the small, small things. things. That's right. If you're not faithful with something that somebody else's. Who's going to trust you with That's the big right. apps? So and so you've been wasting time when you could have been promoting yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah. persons, assertiveness, uh, 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 resourcefulness. Resourcefulness. When he told the man, he said, you could have went to the money changers. He said, look around to your resources. Jesus told the story of a shrewd manager, a shrewd steward. This man had not been managing his stuff right. And his Lord came to him and said, okay, you got to give me an account of what you've been doing because you can't be my steward no more because I heard you've been messing up. And what did he do? Jesus said that he went quickly and made arrangements with everybody who owed his master money. And Jesus commended them. Wow, that's right. He said, this is good. This is a good example of what to do. What was he doing? He was being resourceful. He was. There are resources in the community. There are resources if you would just open your mouth and ask. You have not because you yeah. ask not. If you would just ask, hey, you know where I can get something for this? Yeah. Other people know. I told you with fellowship, you get to get the get to get the resources of others and use them for yourself. Yeah. You have access to others' resources because yeah. you're in fellowship with others. If you would be resourceful yeah. and ask somebody, mm -hmm. you'll find out that there's stuff out there for you already. You've been suffering needlessly because you've been ignorant. God said my people perish. Not because it ain't available, but because they don't know it. You gotta be resourceful. You gotta be all you got to you gotta think like this. This is why I used to say, God, I know you got it for me. Now I'm gonna look under every rock and every bush until I find what you got for me. Do you understand that attitude? You know, I know you got it for me, God. I know you, I'm not going to give up until you give me what I want. I know there's an opportunity for me. I know there's a way to meet my needs somewhere out there. Because you would not let me have this need and not provide a way to meet it. I know it's out there. I just got to find the appropriate way of dealing with it. And there's a resource out there somewhere. See, you don't understand. God plays hide and seek intentionally with us. God plays hide and seek for us to be exercised in finding what he has for us. Yeah. But sometimes we don't trust him enough to even go look. Yeah. We just sit and cry and complain and expect something to happen. And that's not how God operates. That's how we think God operates because we've been conditioned with these crazy religious ideas. But that's not even what the Bible teaches. Amen. He said you could have at least went out there and used your resources. Yes. You could have found some kind of way to make some kind of return. Mm -hmm. You see? And y'all got value. It ain't always money. Sometimes it's your voice. Sometimes it's your personality. Sometimes it's your connection. Sometimes it's your diligence. Sometimes it's your hobby that can make money for you. That's right. Sometimes it's that thrift store. You got a whole bunch of junk people can tell you to get rid of for years. <laughs> and you talk about you ain't got no money. But you got antique. Dressers back there crowded up. <laughs> Do you understand? And you talking about you ain't got nothing. The devil is a liar. God always leaves you with something. He asked Moses, what's in your hand? You got to be resourceful. And then finally, you got to understand 
that money is all about trust. I'm going to say that again. And this is on so many different levels. I'm just going to address one. Money is all about trust. Look, think about it. Just think about it on this stuff. When you first go to work, unless it's a work that they get paid today kind of thing, how long do you work before you get a check? You work, you done went there faithfully for two weeks on time. Did something you might not have wanted to do for somebody you might not have wanted to do it for. For two whole weeks on faith. Trusting that they're actually going to compensate you at the end. Yes. And you don't even like them. <laughs> but you trust that the system is going to work out and they're going to pay you. And you got bills and you got things to do. But you, well, in two weeks I'm going to get paid. You've been telling for Right? You've been telling for In two weeks I'm going to get my check. You just start making plans. You even ordered some stuff on credit. Trusting. Hear me now. Trusting. Anybody got any, a dollar? Yeah, a dollar. Just a dollar or a ten. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Right here on the back of the dollar, it's saying, In God we trust, right? In God we trust. But that ain't what I really wanted to get to. It just said trust, so it jumped out. Okay. This right here on the front of the dollar, it says this note, this is a little note, tender. is legal tender yeah. for all debts, public and private. Oh. At the top of it, it says Federal Reserve Federal Note. Yeah. So they took a little piece of paper yeah. and said, I owe you. Yeah, that's it. And gave it to you. That's it. <laughs> that's it right there. That's it. Yeah. The Federal Reserve, which isn't even federal. Right. Way. Took a little piece of paper, printed it, and said, I owe you one. Yeah. And now all over the world, that is the standard for exchange because it's based <coughs> on trust. Woo. This don't feed nobody. This don't warm nobody. This don't shelter nobody. This don't do nothing for nobody by itself. What it does is it exchanges, exchanges. trust. Amen. So God when he can trust you, mm. will give you more of these <laughs> Wait, based you, on the level at which thank he can you. trust you. That's right. Thank you. Just like people will give you more of those based on their level of trust. Matter of fact, we was on vacation. And there was a jet ski company that we hadn't used before. Because we've been down the floor a couple times before, but we hadn't been to Panama and we hadn't used this company. And my daughter had found it, and, and one of them sounded like it was so much cheaper than the others. <laughs> and my wife said, hold up. Mm -hmm. Before you send them my money, let's verify that they're legit. Am I telling the truth? Yeah. Why? Because she wasn't sure that she could trust them. That's right. But then when we found one that we verified was legit, we sent them our money based on trust. Yes. There it is. And God, when he can trust you, will send you more responsibility Amen. and more opportunity Amen. to exchange your value. Amen. Wow. Amen. Wow. Thank you. Based on his ability to trust. That's why, you know, when I first read this parable, I was poor. And I read that thing. I said, man, that ain't fair. God took from that man who only had one and gave it to the man who had ten. That ain't right. The man was scared. Man, God, you ain't fair. You're not fair, God. That's wrong. <laughs> and some of y'all probably feel that way now. That's wrong. And, and then Jesus said, and to whom, whom uh, uh, to him who has, more shall be given. To him who has not. I said, but that ain't right, God. Because I ain't got nothing. <laughs> so can, how, are you going to take what I got? I going to take what I got when I ain't even got nothing. He who has not, even that which he has shall be taken. Well, first of all, there's a clue right there that everybody got something. Yes, that's right. So when you say you ain't got nothing, you're lying. That's 
You don't know no better. You got something, you just don't see it. You don't know what you got. But you got something, and if you don't use it, you will lose it. Yes. Yes. I ain't got nothing. Yes, you do. And God wants you to take what you do have and make more. That's right. Yeah. Multiply. Be fruitful yeah. and multiply. Let, let's just break down that fruitful and multiply down and let you know. <laughs> trust. God got trust you. God said, first of all, the first commandment was be fruitful and multiply. Did you know that? Yeah. That was the first commandment. Yeah. How fruitful are you? Oh. Can anybody show me your fruit? Hey, uh, uh, Lisa. Uh huh. Uh, can you hold that book up one more time? Oh yes, absolutely. That's fruit. Yeah. Where's my fruit? That, that's one of my fruit right there. That's right. I got some more, but that's one of them. Okay. Can you show me your fruit? Um, Shelly, Shelly, uh -huh. Shelly, where where you have a house at? I got one on, I got two. I got one on Briar uh -huh. and, and I read. Oh, you got two fruits. Two fruits. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can, can, can you show them something later? And I got to the oh, fruit. And, 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 hold on, hold on. Before we get to the people, I'm just, I'm just talking about the stuff that, hold on, that the stuff that facilitates being able. Yeah. Because if you didn't have a place, yeah. right. you couldn't do for these ladies right. what you do. That's right. That's right. I need you to understand this. That's right. If I didn't have a, 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 a building, where would y'all come here? Yeah, that's, that's right. That's yeah. right. That's but point. I want to point out something, and I was quiet when you were talking earlier. Right. Right. But you told me before I had any of this uh -huh. to stop looking at myself in a certain way I know. and start looking at myself that's as right. a CEO. That's he right. told me that. Yeah. He stopped me at the door there, and I get goosebumps because it's. And now I'm trying to train them to do the same thing. Shane. There you are. The same thing that yes, you are, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I keep using her for example. Yeah. But I learned a lot today about yes. money management. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody over here show me some fruit? Mm -hmm. What's my point? God made you in such a way that you can produce something. Yeah. And you need to produce something that I can buy. Mm. You need to produce something that I can utilize. Mm -hmm. You need to produce something that you can exchange with me for my money. That's right. See, some of y'all have value that you have not yet put in a package. Woo! What is that? That ain't nothing but the same stuff I've been preaching for five years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now, other people are buying it online. That I was like, oh, I didn't even advertise or anything. And now I only got three left? Wow, they're almost out of stock. And then that happened a couple of times. Hey. Oh, I done sold a couple of these. Oh, okay, this is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. This is kind of cool. But I wouldn't be able to sell any, and some people would have never got it. If I would have never packaged what I'm telling That's you. That's right. Amen. That's right. But I packaged it. Amen. You see. I didn't depend on one medium for it to get out. That's right. And some of y'all got value. You got skills. You got abilities. You have assets that you have not yet packaged That's in right. such a way. That's right. You have not yet marketed in such a way. You have not taken an assessment. What has God given me? You have not taken an inventory. So that you can package it, so that anybody can see your fruit. Do you understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got fruit that's yet to be discovered. That's right. Mm -hmm. But you have to package it in such a way that it can be exchanged yeah. for value. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Let us pray. Yeah. I just got to drop it like that. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to learn what your word says about how to manage our money. Thank you for helping us build our economic pillar, for not looking at money as a, as a burden or even as something for us to pour, but to see it for the tool that it is, God. Thank you for, for renewing our minds when it comes to money. Money has been such a burden for some of us, oh God. Money has been such a challenge. It's been like a monster to some of us, oh God. And now you have given us the sword to slay it. The sword of the word of God that will help us control this behemoth that we call money. Thank you, Lord, for this wisdom. Thank you for empowering us 
Thank you for equipping us, O Lord God. Help us, we pray, O God, to utilize your word to be smart with our money. Help us to utilize this, these nuggets and this, these feelings of inspiration. Help us know that we're anointed and that we are, we are awesome and that you can't wait to see what we do with what you gave us. Help us overcome all fear and anxiety, I pray in Jesus' name. Help us know that there's no problem that does not have a solution. That's right. Amen. And that you're greater and you're bigger and you're over all things. That's right. Help us be productive as you have ordained us to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.